super comfortable. Mm -hmm. So basically, I arrived uh, during the day of uh, the celebration for the independence of Ukraine. So I didn't know that it was that day, to be honest with you. I didn't do it on purpose, but it's great because like I just go from celebration to celebration. Yeah, and then it's weird because I look up on the internet and apparently it's not even every year. Uh, in the past, it's been like not specifically every year in the world. So I'm pretty lucky to see this, to see this uh, national uh, celebration. As I said like, uh, last year in the vlog, I said that uh, in Maidan anyway, there were like a sort of uh, nationalist feeling in a way. I mean, in a good way, in a positive way, not in a negative connotated way. Let's uh, have like some uh, more interesting images of this moment. <laughs> As I said, this day is celebrated almost every year on the 24th of August. It's obviously about the independence of Ukraine from the Soviet Union and it stands as the national day as well. Maidan Nezalezhnosti is the name of the main square and in Ukrainian it means the independence square. So I think that you can understand actually why everything is taking place there. I was here one year ago, do you remember? I took like a sandwich. So this thing, I, I'm eating share uh, coal, <laughs> so don't be worried about my tongue, but yeah. What we saw um, earlier was like a competition for like something like you know, lifting stuff. It was, uh, it was interesting, there were like even girls and stuff, so sport is important here, to be honest. Try to get a bit the sun and stuff, because I need to take sun even more. Like, look at this, I'm still white. I mean, I have like some markation like here, <laughs> but it's not enough. I need more. I'm in vacation. I need sun. Fuck. Winter is coming. Okay. There are some dancing sessions over here. <laughs> Should I take part? I don't know. But I'm actually quite sad to be here because that's, I'm not realizing the fact that I'm just here for a few days and I wanted to live here at some point so like I'm a little bit sad about it but it's okay because I prefer also coming back and checking that I still like the place as well <laughs> Just relaxing, just chilling for once, <laughs> not doing like anything. Going out in Kiev is all the time like very exhausting because like the roads are just not meant for the people to walk so. <laughs> I just decided to go to this park today. Um, I don't know because like there were like a um, good uh, monument there and then I realized that it's just next to this big uh, tower which is in Kiev, kind of like a TV tower or something. And I don't know, I just uh, feel like, a, I don't know, by chance I got lucky. And it's actually uh, a great place to, to visit as a tourist. I didn't even know this place, but I just like saw it on the internet and I was kind of like uh, thinking that I should see it once I would be back in Kiev. And now I'm there, I'm kind of like, I even forgot like how it was looking like. I just knew that it was like a Soviet uh, memorial or something like this. I don't know, like I've seen like it's about of course like a Second World War and uh, yeah, for all the people who die in Kiev in the Second World War, I think. And one of the best park I've seen so far in Kiev. 
it's a very small one but I know that there is like another one like just next to it and yeah so there is not only this but there is also this which I like which I like a lot tick it's like I have like a, a little peak on my head tick 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 I don't know why but there is like kind of like spotlight you know you see there there is spotlight everywhere so I guess like uh, at night it's also worth uh, uh, coming here Oops, there is like a... Uh, this uh, tower actually is like uh, one of the most... Uh, I mean, I think it's the biggest one of Europe, in Europe. Like, not the European Union, but really Europe. I think it's the biggest one. I'm not quite sure, so if I if that's the case, I'm just going to put a certification while editing, saying like, yes, that's, that's really it. It's amazing. But it's not great looking, let's to be honest, it's just there to do its job, I think. <laughs> but now let's go to Hidro Park, um, because I heard this great place, like there is uh, some stuff to see as well. It's like in the middle, like there is an island in Kiev, I'm going to show you on a card right now. There is an island and like it, it, it is like in between there is like a metro station and you can get down and you can see like the, the small island like uh, in the Dnieper, which is the river in Kiev. I feel like there will be always something to do here because like the city is so big. While I'm getting down to the metro, I am going to tell you more about public transportation here. The transportation in Kyiv is not really the most advanced in Europe actually. For instance, let's make a comparison with Berlin that has a comparable size with Kyiv. Berlin has 10 metro lines, 15 city trains and 22 tram lines. On the other hand, Kyiv has only 3 metro lines, 1 city train and 21 tram lines. The distance also between each station is much more important there, so it's a bit more complicated to get around and if you want to get around, just take the metro and also consider the fact that you may have to walk a lot or take a bus to get where you want to go. The price of a ticket for a single way is roughly 10 times higher. In Berlin it's €2.80, in Kyiv it's 30 cents. Just to give you an idea how expensive it is for the people there, the average salary in Berlin is 3,300 euro gross per month, in Kyiv is 550 euro. So Berlin is paying six times more. So technically the single ticket is more expensive for Berliner. This number could be totally different in the future because of the exchange rate. In Kyiv you also have trolleybuses, regular buses and mashutkas, but they mostly end up in traffic jams and are overcrowded to the point that sometimes no one can get in. Their cost varies, but one way is between 20 cents to 30 cents. Another significant advantage in Kyiv are the metro stations, which are very very nice looking and in themselves they are sightseeing of Kyiv. I was at this uh, beach and it was like very good and I really like it and I just have one thing it's like everybody was like super hot <laughs> like uh, muscular strong and stuff like especially the boys and if you have some insecurities like me <laughs> it's maybe not the best place to go but otherwise like the water was good and everything was good so yeah I do recommend it but I have like terrible sun mark here like 
This is terrible. That's why I tried to go there because I tried to remove it. It's very sunny. Look. I'm going to show you a bit this park and then we're going to see you elsewhere. And then tonight I need to to see my couch my couch surfer for this night and then I will go back to Berlin. <laughs> I'm sad. I just love when there is like this kind of thing like nature and modernity at the same time like it's kind of a aestheticism that I like a lot I don't know about you but I love it like when for example there is a skyscraper that we can see from like I just show you like from from the park it's uh, for me it's like I don't know I just like it it's beautiful <laughs> I'm not arriving from the right angle because obviously I have to climb up again to get up there. <laughs> Let's climb. It's not like it's the first time today. So it's funny because when I was like to Maidan Nezalezhnosti and I was trying to order an ice cream. Uh, I had to say like the word ice cream in Ukrainian, in Russian, but I kind of like don't rem I didn't remember actually like the name in Russian, like it's, what is it, like even now like I didn't check in between it, what, what, Morozhna or something like this, but I know that in, in Ukrainian it's Moroziv, so like, and, and there were like the flavor also written, so I could say it. I could say it in Ukrainian and I just had to to, to replace like uh, Pajalusta by uh, Butlaska and that's it. Which actually I forgot to say so. I did I wasn't even polite but anyway it was okay. But it's funny because like you know if uh, my Russian is deficient I can still try to get around with Ukrainian. <laughs> so it's funny. The advantage of being a bit polyglot. But I wouldn't say that I can speak Ukrainian at all. This is a job offer at KFC for 11,000 grivnias, which is 380 euro plus a monthly bonus. High residential buildings like this one are standard in Kyiv. Most of them are between 20 to 30 floors and they give to Kyiv a unique skyline that makes it uniform and specific to the city. The bridge is new, uh, it wasn't there last year. Oh my god, what a song! <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, anyway, if you like the video, in any case, like support, you know how to do it. See you in uh, Moscow yeah, with the uh, juice. Actually, I won't be alone this time. I won't uh, travel alone. I'm kind of predicting like a lot of uh, of adventures in Moscow. Yeah. So have a nice day. <laughs> Someone can tell me like why I don't have like a window on my side, and there is one on the other one on the other side. Like why? Is it like? I don't know, like uh, a mistake of uh, the construction uh, of this plane. I don't know. I'm not on the emergency exit, so like it's not normal. There is no window. But it said on my ticket that I'm on the window side, <laughs> but there is no window. <coughs> I'm still sick.